welcome to a brand new episode of All Things Honor from someone who is so confused with what happened on last night's episode because as of this recording, we are seven days away from Death Before Dishonor. And let me tell you, we have zero matches. Zero matches. Now, we had one. We had a main event. But, unfortunately, as reported by Tony Khan himself, Mark Briscoe has unfortunately suffered a knee injury, so he cannot compete at Death Before His Honor, which means that they need a new opponent. But, Tony Khan says that he is not going to name this opponent until after Blood and Guts on Wednesday. So, does that mean maybe someone from the Elite's going to challenge him? Like, how's this going to work out? Don't really know. Kind of confused. Well, let's get into episode 20. So we start off with a Matt Seidel promo. This was a very heavy Matt Seidel episode. So Seidel says he is up for any challenge. and He calls out Brian Cage and the rest of the embassy. Cage says that Seidel will never be able to live up to the task of defeating him. And he asks Seidel to find two partners to challenge the rest of the embassy tonight. Cool. Okay. Um, thought Seidel's quest was the TV title, and we'll get to that, but okay, sure. Our first opening contest is Sir Pentacle versus Big Bill. This was a very random match. It it was a squash. It was quick. Big Bill won. Not much to say. Next, we had Athena versus Ava Lawless, who was a local competitor in Canada. And for the first time in Ring of Honor TV... This was the very first time that Athena was not in a Proving Grounds match or defending her title. She was in a regular one-on-one match. Athena also won with a submission, which was kind of shocking because she usually just wins with a pinfall. So I was kind of shocked by that. But she moves on to 30 no in Ring of Honor competition. But unfortunately, we do love back-to-back squash matches for the opener. Athena wins. Now, the thing is, for those who... Know what happens tonight on Rampage. Athena does lose to Willow. And if you saw her promo last week on Collision, Athena said that if Willow can defeat her, then Willow can get a title opportunity. I'm going to assume that means that at the paper it's going to be Willow versus Athena. That At least that's what I think. But then... I don't really know. I don't see Willow defeating Athena here. But that is the only thing I'm going to possibly guess. Because the only other person we've been building up is Layla Hirsch. But I assume that's kind of like a final battle type thing. Because I think it's way too quick to put the title on Layla Hirsch. She's been back for two weeks. Hold hold the brakes a little bit here. Next we have Levi Knight, Michael Allen, Richard Clark. Yes, that is actually someone's wrestling name kind of shocking here and evan rivers versus the righteous and Stu grayson now the main story here was with evil uno who mere minutes to the match pulled up a chair to watch from ringside the righteous obviously dominated most of this matchup to get the win and once the match was over evil uno did hit one of the men in the match with a chair and screamed you know where you belong Stu. you don't belong here the plot is thinking it is thickening the righteous and Stu grayson win so I'm going to assume at the pay-per-view it's going to lead to, to Stu Grayson versus Evil Uno. And whatever happens, happens. Or they're going to do another six-man tag. But since Silver and Reynolds were not on this week's episode, I'm going to assume that's just going to be the regular one-on-one matchup. And whatever happens with that match happens. But again, I'm assuming. We didn't do really do anything to build up this card. So take what I'm saying as it is. We have another Matt Seidel promo next. Seidel says that he has gone on a spiritual quest to find his other two partners for tonight. He seeked out his first tag team partner ever in Ring of Honor, which was Christopher Daniels and the um, the young up-and-comer Darius Martin. He says that his team is unstoppable and they will walk out with the six-man title later on tonight. Sure. Okay. Next was Bambi Hall versus Layla Hurst. Now, all these matches, so there was about one, two, three... There were four matches within the first half an hour, and they were all squash matches. This is way too many squash matches that happened in the first half an hour of Ring of Honor. So, Hirsch is looking to go up the ranks of the women's division. They talked about her possibly versing Athena, but like I said, I don't see it happening until December because I really feel like that's too quick to have her, like, in two weeks beat Athena for the title, or even, like, 
challenge Athena for the title. But Hirsch looked good. Still too many squash matches. Layla Hirsch wins. Now, interestingly enough, so we announced a Ring of Honor TV title eliminator tournament. And the four men competing in this tournament are Tony Nese, Dalton Castle, Shane Taylor, and Sean Dean. Here's my problem with this. We've had so many people try to challenge for this TV title, right? We've had Matt Seidel. We've had Mark Briscoe. We've had Zack Sabre Jr. We've had all these people. We put four people that have never mentioned the TV title ever. <laughs> this was so random. I was so confused. But nonetheless, so we have the first two matches tonight. Then next Thursday, we'll have the finals. And then the winner will face Joe at death. So the, our first match was Tony Knees versus Dalton Castle. Knees comes out before the match to trash Canada and specifically their hygiene practices. He cancels Ring of Honor for the rest of the night and has the crowd do group exercising until Castle comes out to start the matchup. Now, obviously, this episode is called I'm Going to Win an Emmy because while Castle was making his entrance, he described all the things he is going to do when he wins this match, including winning an Emmy. Why is he winning an Emmy? I don't know. but. I'm here for it. So this match was really slow and it really never got going. Mark Sterling and Ari Davari tried to interfere to help out Nice, but the boys were there to stop that from happening and Castle advances to the finals next week. I'm going to assume that Castle is going to win this whole thing. I can't see Shane Taylor wrestling Samoa Joe. I mean, that'd be a pretty good matchup, but I just, I, I'm envisioning Dalton Castle, but I think he'll put on a good match against Joe. Watch Shane Taylor's going to win this now because I said that. So our second match, Shane Taylor versus Sean Dean. This was a nice back and forth between two talented individuals on the Ring of Honor roster. Taylor mostly dominated this match, but Dean had some bits and pieces of offense as well. Obviously now, Shane Taylor versus Castle suffer next week. We're just going to face Joe at the pay-per-view next Friday. Next, we had the boys versus the kingdom. And I love the fact that the kingdom keep calling out the Lucha Brothers for a tag team championship match at the pay-per-view. Because even though they're on a losing streak, they have wrestled seemingly every single week on Ring of Honor TV. And maybe they've lost, but they've had some pretty good showings. And remember, we have tag team champions. Have you seen them? I haven't seen them either. This was a good match. The boys also looked really good, but the Ring of Honor veterans had this 1-1. I am now going to assume that it's going to be the Kingdom versus the Lucha Bros. Because like I said, we haven't seen the Lucha Bros in weeks. And when we did see them, they were wrestling in trios and quadruples i'm gonna call it so the kingdom win ben and taven move on to hopefully wrestle uh the lucha bros next week and in our main event we have the embassy versus christopher daniels matt Seidel, and darius martin now on a pretty bad episode of ring of honor this was a pretty fun main event the team of Seidel. Daniels and Martin were extremely entertaining and they had a fair shot of being a six-man champion on several occasions during the match. But unfortunately, if you've been watching any episode of Ring of Honor TV or watching any episode of this podcast, you know that Brian Cage is pretty unstoppable and sadly Seidel found out the hard way. The Embassy wins. Overall, this had to be the worst episode of Ring of Honor TV we've seen. It's been 20 episodes and this one was horrible. It was the quickest one. It was only an hour and 19 minutes. And we have, like I said, we have zero matches for this show next Friday. I mentioned the show is in seven days when this podcast gets released. And we didn't even build towards anything. I'm going to assume it's Athena vs. Willow because it would happen on Collision. But I don't know if that's happening. And the only thing we built towards was seemingly Uno and Grayson, which is the only storyline happening in Ring of Honor right now, and Joe's opponent. But that's it. We were building Daniel Garcia to wrestle Shibata. Where's Shibata? Where was Garcia? I just, I'm very confused of what is happening here. And it does suck because it, you know, I saw a lot of people saying this. we like, oh, Ring of Honor is just Tony Khan's version of AEW Dark. And for weeks, I'm like, no, 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 that's not happening. That's not happening. But this episode very much proved that it's indeed happening. And, you know, even though there are no matches announced for the show, I'm sure that the pay-per-view will be great because the wrestling on Ring of Honor is always really good. But... They need to get a move on on announcing matches. I'm really hoping they are not going to wait till next Thursday to announce every single match because that means I have to somehow on a Thursday night record my predictions pod and then also write the article. And I really don't want to do that. So please, Tony Khan, announce the matches ahead of time. But regardless, that is it for me. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of All Things Honor. 
And... <laughs>